at all. Uh, but I'm thrilled that you all have come, and uh, for a very special reason. Yes, uh, to, to have this uh, recital, an opportunity to hear great music, of course. Uh, but more than that, I want to kind of upgrade that a little bit. Can I do that? Is that all right? Um, I want to make this a, a Christmas concert. And the reason why I make that distinction is because I want this to be a concert in your hearts as much as it is for those who are performing tonight. So in a chance, yes, we'll all be invited to sing, and, and you'll have a chance to use your own voice, so please do when, when you get that opportunity. Uh, but more than that, each one of these songs here is meant to tell a story. You'll see uh, pictures on the screen, of course, to maybe guide some of this, and you'll see the title in your bulletin, your outline uh, for this service tonight. But I pray that you would be worshiping the entire time. Uh, the performers up here are not performing for themselves, uh, but for the Savior, Jesus Christ, who has come into the world, and we celebrate that on Christmas. Uh, if I haven't got to meet you before, I'm Pastor Nate Tripp. I'm the pastor at Eternal Life Baptist Church, and that's where you're at right now. Uh, if you had, didn't know that, you're like, this is a great concert hall. No, this is a church. Uh, but I, I'm thrilled that you are all here as we get to worship together. Amen? That, that's, that's why we're here, and that we're going to continue to do that all together uh, Tim, would you uh, uh, lead us in singing? And I would invite you all to sing with us that uh, whether you're using your own words or listening to the mu music that you would worship. Would you stand as we sing? Oh, come all ye faithful. be seated. When you take beautiful music of the season and add a second set of hands to the piano and the elegant sounds of a flute for the accompaniment, plus two beautiful children, you have a pr Christmas program that truly reflects the joy we all experience during the holiday season. Joining Ruthie as the second set of hands on the piano is her, her talented sister, Mary Lee from Alabama. The brilliance of the flute is played by Michelle Brinkman, a longtime friend of Ruthie's. Lester Ammerman, who is the pianist for this church, will accompany Joanne Black on the offertory song. And the two beautiful children to complete the program are Ida Marie Lucille Fry, who is Ruthie and Mary's grandniece, with the emphasis on grand, <laughs> and Claire, Brink Claire Brinkman, who is Michelle's talented daughter. Christmas is a sacred holiday that is celebrated throughout the world. 
For Christians, it is a time for celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and thanking God for the greatest gift he could give us. It is the one holiday where families almost always find a way to be together. It is a joyous time when we give gifts. We decorate our tree. We place beautiful lights around the house, and we just enjoy the excitement that is in the air. Some of the best music ever written is music that is played and sung during the Christmas season. Most of us throughout our life have always identified with the manger as the one display that truly reflects what the season is all about. We see the baby Jesus. We see Mary and Joseph. We see the wise men. We see gifts to the Christ child. But we usually don't see or we look past the animals. There's a song that was written in a 12th century France that is called The Friendly Beasts. The song is about the gifts that a donkey, a cow, a sheep, a camel, and a dove gives to Jesus at the nativity. So now I'm going to call Ida to come and sing our song, The Friendly Beasts. Jesus, our brother, kind and good, was humbly born in a stable of wood, and the friendly beasts around him stood. Jesus, our brother, kind. the cow all white and red. I gave him my manger for his bed. I gave him my hay to pillow his head. I said the cow The sheep with the curly hair gave him my mitt of blanket wool. He wore my coat on Christmas morn. I said the sheep with the curly. said the camel yellow and black over the desert upon my back I carried the gifts in the wise man's pack I said the camel
said the dove from the rafters high, I cooed him to sleep so he would not cry. He cooed him to sleep, my love and I. I said the dove from the rafters high,
So as uh, we've said already tonight, sorry, I'm going to be in front of the pulpit, otherwise I start preaching. So this, no, this is how you know I'll be short. Uh, we've said already tonight that this concert uh, is done for the purpose of giving towards the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, which we'll have an opportunity to do in, in just a moment. Uh, but before I do, uh, before I create the, give that opportunity, I want to make sure you know uh, why it's called the Lottie Moon uh, Offering. This is a person's name. That's her right there. A uh, very, very small, statured woman who uh, was born in 1840 and, and died actually trying to make it home for her own health's sake after 40 years spent in, as a missionary to China. Now, uh, Lottie Moon has a lot of things that you could say about her, uh, but some highlights to know is that her efforts in China were among the first from America. When the borders opened up, if you can imagine a world before you could look up, what's a nation like on the other side? What are they doing? Uh, what's their culture like? What languages do they speak? Uh, to know all these things would have been uh, near impossible. And then all of a sudden, world travel opens up, and you have churches recognize, we can take the name of Jesus Christ to more places, places that, that it has not been named before. Uh, the truth is, as we just heard in this video, there are about 3,000 languages, you can call them people groups even, that have not heard the name of Jesus, uh, that do not know the story of God coming into this world to fix our biggest and deepest problems with himself, with his very own son, living the life that we could not. And so this is what Lottie Moon Offering is. It is a, an opportunity to give directly to those who are being sent into the mission field. Uh, Romans 10, 14 says it this way, and asks the question, begging uh, the question, how can someone call on Jesus if they don't believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they haven't heard about him? And how can they hear about them unless someone preaches to them? And how can anyone preach to them unless they are sent? So 100% of these funds that are going to be given tonight are going directly to missionaries, those who are fulfilling this great mission to reach every single language and people group uh, outside of the U.S. This is an international-only focused missions group, and it's for this reason uh, it, it goes far beyond uh, denominations, uh, uh, Baptist or, or Methodist or, or fill in the blank. Uh, this is about Jesus. This is about making Jesus' name known. And that's why uh, in just a moment here, as Miss Joanne is going to sing, uh, I pray that, that you would consider uh, why you would give uh, to the cause of Jesus Christ and what it would take. Uh, what would it take for one more person to hear his name? to hear the call of eternal life. 
Uh, so I'm going to pray for that offering, and then there'll be some men on either side of the aisles. Uh, you may remember these things called offering plates. So we're going to pass those down, and there'll be an opportunity for you to give in that way. If you want to give at a later time, uh, there's a box outside the door, and you can just make sure to mark your offering uh, specifically for the Lottie Moon offering. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you, and we thank you that you love us enough to send your very Son to this earth, uh, where Jesus Christ was with you when the entire world was made. You could say that all things were made through your Son. And then he comes into the world powerless, helpless, defenseless. He comes to us who are needy and needing rescue. And I pray that as we live in light of what he has done for us, that we would uh, recognize the need for others to hear his name, to hear the story, uh, to hear another Noel, that there is good news. Uh, we don't have to stay separated from God. We don't have to be okay with, with someone dying and that being it. But you have made a way for eternal life, to conquer death, to conquer sin, uh, to live forever united with you as we are meant to be. God, we thank you, and we want to give our gratitude to you, uh, not just in word, but in deed. So help us to do that today. Help our hearts to do that with generosity and with the gospel in mind. Uh, help, help our hearts to know that uh, there's nothing more important than someone else having their life eternally changed. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for young A new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voices Oh, night divine
Well, truly, this has been a wonderful evening to get to spend all together here. And as we're closing up, I just want to give a, a few things for you. Uh, one is to celebrate with you and thank you for being here. Um, Miss Ruth, as we were first talking about this, uh, shared with me how every Christmas morning with her dad, at 6.30 in the morning, mind you, they would go to the church and they went for the purpose of, yes, celebrating Christmas, but also uh, with that Lottie Moon Christmas offering in hand. Uh, I think that that priority for her has been instilled in her and it's carrying on and you're even passing it along to a few grandbabies as well. I appreciate that. Uh, but, but I, I want to also celebrate uh, you. Uh, tonight you gave $1,547 to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. So yes, thank you. Yeah, and, uh, and I expect that, that number to go up as the weeks, weeks go on here uh, at this church. Um, but uh, just know you have been uh, instrumental in, in making it possible for one more person to hear about Jesus. So thank you very much. Uh, I also want to take the opportunity, though, to thank those who are involved tonight. There's quite a few folks, if you haven't noticed. Um, and I want to start by recognizing those you haven't seen tonight, but you have noticed them. Uh, and that is uh, Miss Bethany Ammerman in the back here and Dave Inslee in the sound booth. Yeah, they're mysterious and unknown, but give them a round of applause if you don't mind. Yeah. And uh, a few, few more uh, unspoken heroes as well. Uh, Tim Underwood, thank you so much for leading us in, in congregational singing. And in just a second, uh, Bob uh, is going to lead us in, in our closing song tonight. Um, uh, but I, I want to thank Bob as well for organizing so much, working so hard with Miss Ruth uh, to coordinate this event, to make it one that's special and, and unique. Uh, but, but thank you so much, Bob, for all the hard work that you've put into making this a great night. So thank you. And then, uh, uh, of course, uh, all of our, our performers, many of here are up here. Uh, Miss Joanne, thank you. And Miss Lesta, who I get to the joy of, of you leading worship every single week and ministering to me. But tonight was very special as well. And then we had quite a few other friends as well. Miss Ida starting us off tonight. You did great, by the way. Uh, that was fantastic. And the way she got to play with my daughter all day yesterday was even better. Um, and then uh, Michelle and Clara, uh, that was fantastic. Clara, keep going, because that's so great to get to see you do that in the church, to, to lead us in worshiping together. And then uh, Miss Mary, of course, thank you. Uh, and, and thank you, Miss Ruth, uh, for, for making this happen tonight. Uh, I, I, I have enjoyed every single part of this, and I hope you have as well. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Bob just has some, some closing remarks, I think. I think. For a brief moment, did you feel like you were having a sleigh ride? <laughs> they did. Every number they did was great. Pastor Nate's dad has been in music ministry almost all of Nate's life. All of his life, okay. Um, <laughs> Michelle and her husband are music teachers in the school system up in Fishers. Ruthie and Mary Lee have accompanied music programs most of their lives, starting when they were teenagers. How long ago was it? Never mind. <laughs> uh, and so everybody who's been involved with music knows that if you have a bad rehearsal, you're probably going to have a good program. And our rehearsal yesterday was not what we would give an A grade to. But I want to say, as Pastor Nate said, they did a marvelous job tonight. <laughs> can't thank them enough and can't thank you enough for your support to missions, because that's really what this was all about. Now, as we sing the closing number, I'm going to ask all the people who participate, except you folks in the sound booth, so you have to stay there. Uh, to come up and join me on the platform for our closing numbers. And where's Carter? Is Carter still here? Carter, come come on up here, son. If you didn't, he didn't get any credit, 
but he was the one who stood at the door and hopefully handed you your bulletin. <laughs> so he did a good job. So everyone who participates, come on up here. Come on, Ida. Never underestimate the talent of children. I just want to recognize Clara and Ida one more time by themselves. All right, if you'll stand with us, we're going to sing our closing number, Let There Be Peace.